Hello everybody, Flick here, and welcome to my top 5 best and worst games of 2012. I'm joined by Blighty, who is here to comment on my list. So, Hello! There he is. Uh, just a very few quick criteria I use before we get started. It's my own personal opinions. He might disagree, you might disagree. <laughs> feel free to. <laughs> just keep in mind it's my own personal choices. If you want to share yours, feel free. The other things, I didn't include DLC because I didn't think that would be fair. That's Although I might add to a reason I dislike something. Okay. No demos because some people say a demo isn't enough to correctly judge a game. People like your brother. <laughs> so this is this is only <laughs> in, like full games that you've played. Yeah. I also didn't include any free to play games because again I thought that wouldn't be very fair. Because if I did include them, you can be sure Planet Side Two and Star Wars would be on one of the lists. <laughs> Star Wars has <laughs> come out this year. <laughs> Uh, oh, didn't it not? Was it always? Was it last year? No, it came out. And oh. I had it. I got it for Christmas. Oh, that so is true. Count. Okay, I wouldn't. But Planet Say Two only just came out, so that would have been. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to jump straight into it now with the best list first, counting down from five to one, and then the worst. So here we go. At number five, Transformers: Fall of Cybertron. Yes, I think. I do. Are you surprised? A... Uh, yeah, yeah. I was supposed to say, wait, 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 this is the best list. This right? is the best list. It's number five, so it's not like it's the most amazing thing I've played this year, but it was a hard list to find things for. Mm. Things that are like really a above average in terms of enjoyment not necessarily as a game by everyone's standards yeah it helps that i'm a massive transformers geek that kind I'm of explains a, it i am a child of the 80s i loved the original cartoon it was the first thing i was ever addicted to collecting toys as a kid later on then, it was crack then, then crack and, and, yeah, and yeah, alcoholism yeah. And murdering hookers it's a problem <laughs> i'm trying to get over anyway so you but you've played the first one you weren't a fan of transformers you enjoyed the first one or yeah, the, with me. The, I, I, I did. I, I really enjoyed it, especially in the multiplayer. It was exactly, everything yeah. everything that was good about Gears, but different. The multiplayer was a little more bland in Fall of Cybertron, but I, I really liked the story mode. It felt more like an action adventure. It felt it had like good pacing. You, I see. I've, I've uh, been playing the demo yeah. for the, the multiplayer. I didn't get into it, but you know, I can, I could see, I could see that you know, if, if the campaign you know, was better than, than the last one, then that that's a good reason for you putting it in your list, I guess. Yes. Not just because I'm a fan of the source material. Because it actually it lifts... I heard you getting Steam messages. <laughs> this is it's, why you go yeah. on busy. <laughs> Does busy work? No, no. Now, what was I saying? Source material, yes. It doesn't just lift from the original cartoon. It lifts from the movies. It lifts from the old comics and the new comics. It lifts from the books. It's It was clearly made by people who knew their stuff nerds like i am about the source material so, so it I, I can feel, appreciate that it didn't feel like it was like whatever the most recent movie outing tried to cut it up a bit and stick it into a game it, it didn't feel like michael was... bay even though they kind of had to make some of them look a bit like michael bay's abominations <laughs> but no <laughs> we're trying to concentrate say, on look, the positives <laughs> look a bit like michael bay hmm. that would be scary a transform with michael bay's face he turns into <laughs> a mechanical <laughs> dick at number four on the best list is Faster Than Light. Now, this is another game I haven't played. This is not, but you've heard me talk about it and sing its praises in the podcast. I've, I've watched videos and heard you talk about it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's, um, why do I like this? I like this because this is a game that I had, like I had a concept for quite a few games and unfortunately Faster, of Light, Faster Than Light was one of them. Kind of a zombie survival game and then a space survival game. Like sort of ideas I wish into. I had the means to make into a game of my own so that's probably one that appeals because it's very close to the kind of thing I wanted I think I'm probably one of the few people who like Star Trek Voyager the best out of all the Star Treks just because of the whole concept of being stranded in space and See. having to keep up your own sense of morals despite the fact you have no friends or anything you're just <laughs> on, you're stranded <laughs> your own set, like you say, your own sense of morals, as if you know yeah. there's there's a bit of freedom there. Well, there is. I don't like society's morals. I like my own. It just so happens that they're good morals. <laughs> you lie. <laughs> yeah. So faster than light. It's a game in which you die over and over, or you can finish it in a couple of hours. But it is very, very addictive. A bit like Dreadmore. Yes, very much so. Yeah. It's a, a simple concept of get to point B from point A, and survive. Once you get to point B and you achieve your mission, you've then got to 
kill the thing that's been chasing you for the whole game. So, so if you not... haven't done enough preparation prior to that, uh... back to starting over. <laughs> but yeah, it's just the simple concept of tell people that they're about to be attacked and then help them fight off the people who are attacking you. But it's the journey on the way, the randomised events you find. Sometimes you might get unfairly killed it just happens but it doesn't matter because it's so easy to just restart i mean sometimes you might like for the footage that will be playing behind this you might see i can't remember if i kept it or not i helped a space station that was getting overrun by quote alien giant spiders so i was expecting a reward and one of my crew got killed by the giant spiders <laughs> and losing a crewman right at the start of the game because it was just a new fresh game i'd started it pretty much cripples you so you just restarted again from there, did you? I restarted a few times to get something. <laughs> I, had, I had forgotten how to play it because I hadn't played it for a little while because of everything else that's been out this year. But then as soon as I picked it up again, I was like, oh, damn, this is addictive. It reminds, <laughs> why, why did it, I do that? It reminds me of Dungeons of Dreadmore. I mean, I couldn't stop playing that game when I got it. it just, and I you know that if you were to play I'd it stop. now, you'd probably... Be yes, I would probably fall straight back that into That is the reason I regret starting up faster than light again for footage for this video because I want to play it now. Right now. <laughs> right this very second. At number three is XCOM. Any unknown. It's the game I've played! You have oh. played it. You have. Uh, would you agree that it deserves a placement? I would. I would probably say from the standpoint that XCOM is like my new Dreadmore, or ah. it would be, it's my it's my faster than light for you. It's like crack. It's the the one more, not the one, one more, more turn. turn. It's one more day, I suppose, on that. That's isn't it? because it's, it's a free access game. So it's, it's oh, awesome. yeah, it's like Civ Five all over again. It's mm -hmm. just like turn based shooty aliens. It has strategy. It's yeah. got that addictive quality. It's very enjoyable to play, even though you can sometimes frustrate yourself with clicking one square too many than you meant to and not yeah. being able to undo your move. But and even the multiplayer is good fun, playing against somebody else and, you know, having Skype running and playing against you the other day and it's like, you're not trying to give away too much about what you're doing in the fog of war. It but... is very hard to do a banter commentary on <laughs> XCOM multiplayer when we're both trying to not give away what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look at this guy here, he could be anything, he's doing a thing. I'm being a sneaky sausage! Oh dear. So yeah, that's on here because I, I I do like my strategy games and XCOM. I didn't play the original. It was one of those things that passed me by, but this one had me hooked despite, I was going to say arguable faults, but yeah, there is faults. There is. I did play play the original um, after it was gifted to me on Steam and it's the it's alright. The concept is I the can same. See, yes, I can see how how, you know, back in the day it would have been very enjoyable, but unfortunately it's one of those things that it hasn't aged no. terribly well. Ah, but the concept has. And yes. That's why XCOM Enemy Unknown works. That's the same reason why you've still got, you know, new Civilization games coming out. Exactly. The concept, the concept is behind sound, Civ it's just you update the graphics. And it's rock solid. I mean, copied over from, you know, things like Risk and, and Populous and all these other things, Age of Empires, rolling it all into one. Lots exactly. Of at number two is Borderlands 2. That's... You know, that's a sound a sound choice. I, I would put that. an asterisk next to this that you really do have to play co-op to appreciate it as much as I did. Yes. Because alone it would not be as fun. Uh, the, the, when we discussed this in the podcast, I would say that the, the story is, is, is better than yeah. Borderlands 1. The writing is it's a like, lot better. Like, and the, yeah, the writing is a lot snappier. The characters are a lot better. You know, the dialogue is great. I mean, we'll probably get to this in in the um, awards that we do at the end of the year. But Hanson Jack is definitely there's no there's no contender for best character of the year other than Hanson Jack <laughs> because some of his lines yes, are just fantastic. He is a very good character. He's very well written, and I'm a nerd for writing things as well for writer type stuff. So if there's a very well written character. I can appreciate that a lot and it makes it more enjoyable because you get engaged. You don't necessarily like him, but you can <laughs> like his character, the way he yes. interacts with you. I mean, he does very bastardly things in the game, but they're enjoyable. It's, it's It doesn't get repetitive as much as the first one did. No, I mean, it is still, there is still that, you know, go here, kill this, go here, find that. But for some reason, 
all these little bits and pieces that they must have added in, it doesn't feel like you're just repeating the same shit over and over and over. Yes, and that's when you can appreciate why good writing is important. Because it, never, it can make the mundane interesting. If, it never felt like there was a grind in there yes, at all. Yes, if it conceals the grind. That's exactly it. If you hide the grind behind entertainment, then you've achieved something that MMOs wish they could do. Hide the bump and grind. The bump and grind, yes. <laughs> so that is why it's number two. At number one on my best games that I played that were also released this year. Drum roll is a game that was released at numerous times throughout the year. Ah, uh, I know what this is. What is it? The Walking Dead. It is The Walking Dead. Yes, it is. It was originally released in April, and then there was a, quite a bit of delay before episode two, but then it was pretty much one a month, and it's now the, all of season one is out. So that's... It's one of those games that is more about the experience than an adventure game like Borderlands 2, where it's excitement and yeah. killing and getting better loot. There's not anything like that in a point and click. It's not even a good example of a point and click, I would say, because there's no puzzle solving. Per- <laughs> like the part where there is puzzles, but they're so basic. The the way that I the way that I would go about describing it is that it's very similar to playing Heavy Rain, where it's more like an interactive movie yeah. than anything else. Yeah. In fact, it's probably closer to just like like an interactive graphic novel, really. Yeah, or an, inter- an interactive episode of a TV show, if you're only familiar with it through that. It's, I mean, it's it's fun, and each chapter is... You know, I mean, I have only played the first two chapters, so I'll put that out there, and I should should play them all, and I do enjoy it. I just... Hmm. I, I lack time. But anyway, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> time is my enemy, but I, I, when I when I get it and install it, I will play all each chapter through. The time is everyone's enemy, done. for the record. I've just... From start to finish in one sitting. I haven't like stopped it, you know, turned off, mm. gone to bed, anything like that. They're not like terribly long, so it's easy to do yeah, that. Yeah, each each episode is around about two hours long. Two, so, three hours tops. Mm-hmm. Well, I wouldn't um, go as far as three, but still. Three if you're going around trying to get like all sorts of little bits of conversations. It doesn't stuff. lend itself well to replaying though, because then you yeah. notice that all oh, the choices are very arbitrary and don't really affect much in the long run. But it's more about that first playthrough. No spoilers, you- like. That's why, actually, in the background, there will only be screenshots because I didn't want to do any footage at all. Yeah, yeah you would you would spoil I'd, spoil it. It's yeah. just promotional screenshots that I've used. The story is very good. It becomes very predictable, but around the middle, episode three is by far the best one. Ah, so I've got something good you to do. look forward to. You do. It's very well done. It's well acted. They picked excellent people to do the voices. I think it's largely unknown people as well, other than the ones from the TV show that made yeah, the movies, yeah, but. yeah. It's, it's less of a game and more of an experience. That was my conclusion with it, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. That, that's, that's, that would be your caption for the back of the box. Less of I a would, game, more of an experience. Yes. Well, actually, you'd probably want to put in a good experience, because you can have lots of experiences and not necessarily good <laughs> ones. I got my ass, pro aliens. It was an experience. It was an experience. <laughs> you could put that on the back, back of XCOM. Abduction victim <laughs> says, I had my ass examined. It was an experience. So to recap the list, that was at number five, Transformers: Fall of Cybertron. Number four, Faster Than Light. Number three, XCOM: Enemy Unknown. Number two, Borderlands Two. And at number one, The Walking Dead Season One. Just in case Season Two turns out to be crap. <laughs> Speaking right of, Ooh. at number five on the worst things I played this year, Pokemon Black slash White Two. Although it was Black Two in my case. <laughs> I actually found it quite hard to find stuff to put low on this list. So Really? Yeah, I, I, I think I was a bit smarter with my choices of games played this year when I was last year. Last year it was really easy to pick bad games. But last year we played a lot of games. I yes. wouldn't say I played as many different games this year as I did last year. I, I'm Not necessarily, but as I say, I think it was a bit, we were a bit smarter with our choices. <laughs> With our wallets, except for I say that Flurry, yeah, I still I'm, did fight I'm about, five. Yeah, I'm about, I'm about about to witness firsthand something. I'm yeah. Yeah. Keep going. So Pokemon Black Two is the one I played. The reason this is on the list it is the same Pokemon game over and over, which I haven't really minded. But this is such a a rushed, cheap, buggy cash in with so little added compared to Black and White One that it's it's it seems like a desperate cash grab. And I do mean desperate for a whole bunch of reasons surrounding Game Freak and Nintendo. Let's put a Pokemon game out there. They sell. I mean, I think the only one I've actually played to date is still Pokemon Red and Blue. Then you have no the valid two, opinion. The very first. Because you played it as Prime. And 
and and that's it, you know. It was like there were good games and stuff, but it's just it, playing games like that on handhelds. Handhelds, no. I just I can I can never really get into playing on a handheld device at all. Oh, I do. Phone. I like <clears throat> I've liked many. Yeah, I'll brush over whatever you're about to say there. <laughs> I've I it do is like handheld. The, I, I have always liked hands. the Pokemon games. I've liked them since the first generation. I've played every generation, one game out of every generation. And I did quite like Black One. It's just this one, it's so it was lazy and you could argue that Black One and White One were lazy as well. So it's a lazy sequel to a lazy sequel. Why have they not made like a big proper full three D uh, I say 3D, I mean, like, not, not 3D TV, but, you know, like a, a proper HD game for it. Well, they have the Pokemon Stadium games, but not the yeah, actual... But, do you know what I mean? Like, a, like... Uh, that would involve too much work. 2D's cheap. But... 2D's doable. I suppose they're probably going, this this works, let's keep stretching it until <laughs> the udders run dry. I think they have already run dry, and now they're getting blood. <laughs> and that's what Black 2 was to me. <laughs> Cow blood. Plus, they wrote themselves into a corner with the story to Black and White 1 because they made the bad guys the good guys and the good guys the bad guys. I mean, you're playing as a bastard who enslaves animals, essentially. Uh, Peter were right. But that, it, isn't that like the concept for Pokemon in general? Yeah. You go around uh, enslaving animals. Yes, and, and their them mistake the was in Black and White 1, they pointed it out and then they realised halfway through, shit, we have written ourselves into a corner here. We have pointed out that we're the bad guys. We've been playing as the bad guys since day one. Let's randomly make the bad guys in this game have some kind of world domination theory about when they let all Pokemon go free instead of making them beat each other senseless. <laughs> and that pro- that propagated I mean, yeah, this one, it's the story in this one. I mean, it, it is essentially a story of a guy goes into the jungle, he captures some wild animals, he squeezes them into a small container, ships them away somewhere else, lets them loose into an arena and watches them fight to the death. Or in my case trade for Zora and then force it to have sex with a ditto over and over again so I could have an army of Zoras to trade for every other Pokemon I ever needed. <laughs> In theory. In theory. <laughs> At number four is Alan Wake's American Nightmare. Hmm. Now, anyone who's listened to the podcast will know that we have sung the praises of the Alan Wake game Alan Wake a lot. is one of the best And you know, best I almost found a way I, also, I, made, I almost found a way to get it into my best list because it was released on Windows this year. Uh-huh. And I played it. I played it for review on you did? for you Critical Gamer UK. And I enjoyed it over again. Totally, totally enjoyed it from start to finish. Just a very enjoyable game. Let's just, so, just put that here. If you haven't played it yet, yeah. go out and buy it now. Yeah, if you're it listening is... to this at Christmas, it'll be in the Steam sale and it'll be about a pound. Get it. Or get it for a console. You'll probably get it for a fiver in any yeah, shop. Right, second hand. Yeah. It'll probably be a couple of quid. But so it is definitely. So to move on to the bad one, <laughs> Alan Wake American Nightmare. It, uh, this is technically DLC, I suppose, because it was download only, but it wasn't an addition to the original game. It was a standalone expansion. So that's why I included it. I included it also because the story in it was very disappointing compared to the original game. I think that's why I didn't buy it because I think I put been... you off with my my review of it. <laughs> There is that, but if it had been a full game on a disc, yeah. I probably would have bought it. But then you yeah, downloaded I, it. Mm. But gra- granted, Remedy isn't a big company, and they take a while to work on stuff, so this might have just been to tide them over cash-wise, and fair enough. But what they should have done was what their original plan was, and just have the arcade mode, and just have that. Because the arcade mode that, that they released with it is quite fun. Just And you know, you'll be watching some footage of that in the background now. You just you survive and put on, killing yeah. enemies. They should have had that, they should have had it co-op, and it would have been fine. It wouldn't have affected the story or anything. But instead, they had to try and tack on a story where you play the same short sequence three times in a row because it's a time loop storyline. Yeah. And it's it, even if it doesn't mean to be, it comes across as lazy that you play through the same three areas three times with the story only changing slightly. You, it's like the butterfly effect because you're trying to alter events to the, the point where you keep on it. getting thrown back at, which has been <sighs> done for a start. It's also not very horror I mean, I suppose you could argue that Stephen King does that kind of thing, but either way, it didn't feel as smart <laughs> as Alan Wake tried to be originally. It was like it's, a bad version of Groundhog Day. I mean, a good version Groundhog of Groundhog Day. Day is a bad version of Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from Bill Murray. Poor Bill Murray. Bill Murray is fine. Really fine. At number three on my worst list is Diablo 3. And I've only just noticed I matched up Borderlands 2 
with number two, and now Diablo three with number three. I am pleased. That, that satisfies you. I am your... very satisfied. My OCD is loving it right now. It won't for the other two, unfortunately. But anyway, yeah, Diablo three. I did quite like it at first, the first playthrough, and then liked it less and less and less. And, and I don't want to play it. Yeah. Couldn't be bothered. I don't think that there's any way that you could convince me to play it anytime soon either. No. We played it to death, but that's the problem. It had a very addicting quality. For a very short much, period of time. But unfortunately, that addicting quality isn't something that can last. It's not like Civilization. Where it's not you like Diablo 2, and... which we played oh, for many years. <laughs> I think part of it's probably down to the constraints of the skill trees and stuff i think that kind of possibly is, the classes is one of the root weren't causes. amazing uh, no. the story wasn't anything other than dull really the yeah. cutscenes were nice yeah the cutscenes were good i didn't hate the the way they changed the skills as much as some people did i, I didn't mind it too much that you couldn't kind of accidentally break your build no i i enjoyed you know the, you know the sort of destructible scenery some of the sound effects were brilliant mm. But I, th- I think the main reason it's on the list is just that it didn't capture what I really liked about Diablo 2 and really enjoyed playing it. Just, I, It's hard to put into words why, it just didn't manage it. Also, always having to be on, even if you're playing alone, pissed me off to no end. Oh, so that's a very... Error 37. 37, yeah. that's what it was. Error 37 will be what Diablo 3 is remembered for, and that's not <laughs> a good thing. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Because I did like aspects of it, but no, it, it was a disappointment, so that's why it's on the worst list. It could have had more classes, more zones, and a little bit more sort of... Indeed. And less real money auction houses, but you know, that's <laughs> neither here nor there. At number two on the worst list is Black Ops 2. Again, oh. with the number iteration. I'm very is that happy. that purpose, or is it by accident? That was actually totally by accident. I did not match them up that way. The trick, before you start talking, the trick with um, mm-hmm. Black Ops 2 is that you didn't want to buy it. No, I was no I was emotionally blackmailed into it by you, you and your brother. And... Molly coddled into it by me trying to tell you that it's fine. You know, it's not as bad as if, you know as you've got it in your head, and then it was. It was. <laughs> and it was it was bad for me too. Let's just get um, the good out of the way first. I quite like the story mode, but everyone always says that Black Ops and Call of Duty games in general are about the multiplayer, so that's why I'm judging it on, since everyone else expects you to. Fair enough. That's, that's and I good. hated the multiplayer. It is one of the most awful multiplayers I have ever been subjected to, and I've played some bad ones. <laughs> I, I can't stand I would, it. I would agree. It's There's no tactics. I, Every game mode just degrades into team deathmatch, regardless of whether there's flags or briefcases or objectives to actually cap. No one cares. Everyone just wants to use f- spammy guns because those who aim get shot a lot. Pretty much. And you spawn, get shot in the ass. You respawn, maybe shoot somebody else in the ass. Yes, and then get, get shot, shot in the, the ass. ass. It's no, it, it's not fun. It caters to the. I'm going to say like this in a very stereotypical way, but the younger crowd that want yeah. that sort yeah. of quick, it, fast burst bits of excitement. It caters then, to most of the five year olds who play, unfortunately. And you need to kill those people off in game quickly so that they respawn and go through that little burst of excitement again. There's no. You know, long term yeah, yeah. strategy or tactics involved. Even the zombie mode, which is other multiplayer modes, I quite like it, but we had fun with it, but that was only because we made our own fun rather than the We made our own fun. fun. <laughs> we oh, did yeah. make our own fun. Diglett style. No, not Diglett style. <laughs> the mode itself, style. especially if I wasn't playing it with people I knew, I would find no, it boring no, no. or it would boring. get tiring very quickly. Yeah. So, really, the only draw is the multiplayer because as good as the campaign might or might not be, to me, it was quite good. It's not very long, so you might replay it once or twice to achievement hunt. But, but it's certainly not worth shelling out like 50 quid. Especially, no, not when they have an inflated RRP just because they know children will get their parents to pay it for them. Um, and maybe it is a stereotype to say that it's mostly kids playing it. But in my experience of the games I subjected myself to, at least the only people it using bikes were kids who yep, weren't yep. old enough to be playing it. Maybe it's because all the older people are getting smart like us. Are using Skype? I, I hope so. <laughs> I, I hope really so. Really hope so. <laughs> At number one for my worst games played in 2012 that were also released this year. This is your worst this game. This is the of worst year. one. And as you probably long since guessed, it is Resident Evil 6. 
Uh, I hate. We had Resident such Evil. high hopes for Resident Evil, and part of that such is inflated disappointment because of I was looking forward to. I like my Resident Evil games. I've liked all of them to some degree. I haven't hated any of them prior to this. You played them all. I even yeah. didn't mind Operation Raccoon City, and that wasn't technically a real Resident Evil game. This real Resident Evil game, Resident Evil Six, is awful. <laughs> I didn't like any aspect of it. It's all quick time events, and I was killed by vehicles more than I was killed by enemies. That's true. <laughs> check out the videos. For yeah, that check one. out our playthrough if you don't believe me. I was killed by quick time events and vehicles. Never, in fact, I don't think I was ever killed by a zombie. Ever. Through the whole playthrough on any of the three campaigns, four campaigns, technically. No, probably not. I don't think so. And just to, to riff a few more annoying things the story is boring, didn't grasp okay. me at all. The writing is terrible to the point that it's actually quite funny. Well, that's kind of a bad and good thing. I mean, if you like, we if made, you like laughing at bad writing, then it's a really good game for that. That's another situation where we made our own fun. We did make we made our own fun quite a lot, and one that everyone complains about. It's not a survival horror game. It's not a horror game. Yeah. It's an action adventure shooty game. It's it's like Gears of War or that kind of thing, which is okay. Is. But that's not Gears Resident Evil. Evil. It's what we- yeah, it's Gears of, Gears of Evil Duty Call of Zombie War. I think the prob- the biggest problem is is that we'd psyched ourselves up that, you know, come on, like after, you know, Resident Evil 5, surely they'd been listening to people and said, right, okay, well, we'll go Scale back it a bit. back a bit. Just a little bit. Go back to Resident Evil 4-ish. That's fine. Make that co-op and that's fine. Uh, no, they oh, went no. over the deep end into Gears of War territory. Gears of War is more of a horror, scary, you know, <sighs> game than... <sighs> It just has so many things wrong with it. And it could have been so great. Yeah, I mean, technically it plays okay. I didn't have any pro- problem with the no. controls. Controls. It looks and... okay. Not amazing, but it looked okay. And Some of the ideas for the enemies and stuff were kind of fun. The mercenary mode is still quite fun. I like yeah. that it's co-op. I definitely wouldn't have got through it if it wasn't co-op. That's for damn sure. In terms of, I just would have shot myself, probably. You wouldn't have been able to enjoy enjoy slating the game exactly. unless somebody was there yeah. to, to feel your bile being vented. Yeah, Resident Evil 6 almost made it onto my best list just because I enjoyed ripping it apart as we played it so much. Because it was <laughs> so bad. But I thought, thought it would be fairer to put it on the list where it deserved to be. And it, by far, was the worst thing I've played this year. And it wasn't as if... Well, there wasn't that many terrible things I played this year. I mean, you can argue that there was other far worse games, but as I said at the start, this is only things I played. And yeah, I'm interested I, that Assassin's Creed wasn't even mentioned in your list. Is uh, it because it was Assassin's neither Creed one of the best? Assassin's Creed is bland about? enough that it didn't go on either list. Ah, uh, it's snuck by the censors. It's sitting in the middle ground, yeah. Especially not when I had things like Resident Evil to concentrate on. <laughs> <laughs> Or XCOM to, to Or XCOM, or, to or the good and the bad, yes. So that concludes my list. Feel free to disagree or agree, but as I said at the start, it's just my opinion. My bias Diglett opinion. style. Diglett style. Feel free to share your own top five, either best and or worst. Let me know what you think. If you agree that Resident Evil 6 is by far the worst game that you've also played this year. I, I've yet to hear anybody saying that it's a fantastic game. That's because I've killed them. Ah. Diglett style? Yes. <laughs> what is Diglett style? I don't know. I just I just started Diglett style. What is this? It's my new thing. Is it when you have three genitals? No, oh, that's a... Doug oh, Trio. Oh, that is a Doug Trio. And you say you've only played one Pokemon game. You know them better than me. Doug Trio, I played the first one a lot. Doug Trio was in the first one. It was the evolution of a Diglett. Is that what happened after you did it Diglett style? Yeah. Nice. 